Hello, I'm Ed Duncan. I'm a resident in the Magnolia Building here at Westminster Woods at Julington Creek. And uh, first I'd like to say uh, a very Merry Christmas to all of you who will have a chance to see and to listen to this video of beautiful Christmas music played on antique music boxes. My wife and I started collecting these antiques about 45 years ago after, just by chance, visiting a collection in Ocala, Florida. And we were so enchanted by the music that we drove back there the next week and purchased a large one, barely fit into our big station wagon. And we still have that one. It has a beautiful cabinetry beautiful sound. It's currently silent, I'm sorry to say. It's a waiting repair of the coin slot, which is the mechanism that actually starts the music mechanism. We'll see it in a few minutes. But the Christmas music I will be playing for you will come from two other music boxes that were made between 1895 and 1905 by the Regina Music Box Company, which was headquartered in Rahway, New Jersey. And it was the national leader in sales of music boxes uh, at that particular time, at the turn of the century. Until the early 1890s, uh, music boxes utilized a cylinder uh, which had projections on it that would pluck the musical comb. But the disc method of music box playing was then invented over in Germany where a metal disc had holes punched in it which created projections on the underside. And as the disc went around, those projections plucked what they call a star wheel, which in turn plucked the musical comb and thus you get the music. Now, this disc style music box had a great advantage and that was it could give you variety that the cylinder box could not. The cylinder just kept repeating the same song, but each disc was a brand new song. So the same machine could play unlimited songs and the popularity of music boxes was greatly increased until Thomas Edison came along and invented the phonograph, which was the beginning of the end for the music box industry. The Regina Company transitioned to making vacuum cleaners, and many of us can remember seeing or using the Regina vacuum cleaner. In addition to the uh, two Regina boxes, <clears throat> I will show you some other mechanical music that we collected over the years. There will be two musical revolving Christmas tree stands, plus several antique photo albums that play music when you open the cover. They were quite popular around 1900. At that time, people went to professional photography studios for portrait photos. Always formally posed, no candids like we have today. No one had their own little uh, smartphone camera. The quality of these photographs was excellent and they were not cheap. So people invested in expensive, very expensive albums to preserve them. Some of these albums were musical. Current generations probably have never seen one of them. And lastly, I have a couple of smaller antique disc boxes and a few non-antique wind-up boxes we might get to today. So, with that introduction, let me proceed to play some unique and charming Christmas music for you, and maybe a few show tunes of more recent vintage. So, now I'd like to show you our Pride and Joy music box. This is a 20 and three-quarter inch disc uh, Regina music box. Uh, it's quite tall, probably five, five and a half feet. 
quite heavy. Take a couple of men to, to move it. And it plays beautifully. It has a beautiful cabinet and very beautiful sound when it's playing. Now, I'll give you a sort of a uh, explanation of how these work. Just a second. First of all, I'll show you the coin slot. This is the problem we're having. You put a nickel in here in this slot, push it in, and then the disc revolves. That is when it's working. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, each disc is a new tune. So you would have a storage bin down here below. And in it, you could have another 50 or so of these discs. Now this is the back side of the disc. So the disc has been punched in many places, which creates projections here on the back side. And as the disc goes around, these projections pluck what we call little star wheels. The star wheels then pluck the comb. This is what they call a double comb box. You see this one on top and the one down below. And here's a these uh, sort of uh, projections on this wheel. They go in the holes around the edge of the disc and make it turn and then all working together you get a beautiful sound. So much as I would like to play it for you today um, it will be a couple of weeks before I have this uh, coin mechanism uh, straightened out. As you can imagine there aren't uh, too many experts on antique music boxes around so you can't just pick up the phone and have someone come out and take care of it right away. But um, there is a very good fellow here locally who's going to help me out. So with that, perhaps we'll go into the other room and start playing some of that beautiful Christmas time music on the other two Reginas. As I said, there are two here. One we call a tabletop. This one it has its own stand and the stand below has storage for uh, additional discs. These music boxes were, the cabinetry was very, very well done. And this one has the name of the maker. This disc, which looks brand new, is relatively new, 10 or 15 years. There are two or three craftsmen in the United States who um, make reproduction discs. And the good thing about that is uh, that if you want something modern, you can get it. I have discs of certain show tunes like from uh, Les Mis um, and uh, Cats. So you don't have to always listen to um, 100 year old music. So we will uh, play this in a few moments. Okay. All right, well, we're going to play this um, table model, Regina, 15 and a half inch disc, and uh, it's from about 1895 to 1900. And we're going to play green sleeves. It's a very nice piece on this machine.
This one is going to be away in the manger. of the Sugar Plum Fairy. itself was made and it plays beautifully it's just not quite as shiny and pretty this will be O Sanctissima
just keeps on going, 100 years. All right, now this is our upright Regina. It's the same size discs, 15 and a half. But um, this one probably came out around 1910 or so when the, uh, the Edison and Victrola phonographs were catching a hold. And uh, so the Regina people, they said, well, if you can't beat them, join them. We'll make our regular box, but we'll fix it so it can be adapted to play records. So we can take the disc off, put on a turntable plate on this spindle here so that it goes around just like the discs, and then put a needle in here in your arm, and put your phonograph on, and you can play your phonograph records. So that was our last gasp to try to stay in the business, so to speak. Okay, so this one is um, called Monastery Bells. It's not a Christmas song, but it's very uh, holy type song. It meant a lot to my wife and I. says my master's voice and then you see the great big sound horn coming out of the phonograph. Well, uh, this uh, uh, cabinet was made so that it had what they call a built-in horn and they used the same type of wood that they would use for the sound horn and built this sort of channel in here. So uh, when you're not using it, it stays closed. When you're playing, you open it up and this is where it projects the sound. There's a sounding board in there and, and it, it, it um, accelerates the sound, so to speak. And it has a cabinet below for uh, storage. Interesting, this one has a storage for the discs on one side and storage for the records on the other side, trying to keep up with the times. We're going to play Bring Him Home from Les Mis.
right, well now we're going to show you a few of these uh, musical photograph albums from around 1900. The clasp will trigger the music. It, Some of them play multiple songs. generation and then this would be the middle more the younger generation more the younger I have a picture of my father taken around 1900 looking like little Lord Fauntleroy So, we'll try this other one. It's another one that has family pictures in it. The one we just looked at, every picture, every page is full. This one, a few were taken out. I like to think that since the first page is empty and part of the second and third page, that those were the main family members, I hope. But here we have a little Lord Fauntleroy picture again. Yeah, some of these were taken out. So I guess if you were left in, you weren't the most popular member of the family. And this fellow's no spring chick. It looks like Mr. Smith's cross, cough drops, or the Smith brothers, or whatever it was. Uh, Yeah, so if this was taken around 1900, that guy was probably 75, so. And this, believe it or not, it does play when it wants to. Lullaby. show you uh, two of these um, bases for uh, small Christmas trees. They are musical bases. Uh, you can um, put a small live or an artificial tree in. This one uh, came from the, the Rouge uh, Music Box Factory in La Croix, Switzerland. Uh, they are the world's foremost makers of music box mechanisms. They can make something and then sell it to you for a couple of hundred dollars, but they're much more interested in selling the ones for three, four, and five hundred thousand dollars that they make and they sell to the oil sheiks and uh, people with more money than cents. But uh, uh, my wife and I were on a music box tour of Europe and we went to their factory and we were able to pick this one up. I had to bring it back on my lap because I didn't trust the bag baggage carriers. And uh, it's unique in that they have electrified the base so that you can plug in the power and then you can plug in the lights on the tree to that power and the whole thing can rotate it without winding up all of the electric wires and it plays a couple of tunes. It's not very loud.
And this other one is, now, that, that one was not an antique. Uh, that was bought 20, 25 years ago. Uh, but this one uh, does come from around 1900, made in, uh, I believe, Leipzig, Germany. And uh, you can pick these up on eBay and uh, antique dealers. And um, so they have this cup, which is removable. And uh, just like with a regular Christmas tree, you tighten the bolts at the bottom to keep things from falling over. Uh, if you had a string of lights that were battery operated, you could put them on here. But uh, otherwise you can't put lights on here. But it plays pretty nicely, I would say, for something uh, that's got a hundred years on it. It's louder than the other one. Plays at least two tones.